Hey guys, it's Bree here with Boston and Branch Farm and today we're going to be talking about how to make lilacs last a little bit longer in a vase and also how to make them into a beautiful arrangement perfect for Mother's Day. Now if your mom is anything like myself or my mom, she loves lilacs. I adore lilacs, so usually blooming in my zone just in time for Mother's Day and I love them because of their old-fashioned beauty, but also because of how fleeting they are. They're really only in season for about a week every year, so it makes them really special. However, they don't have the best vase life. They tend to last maybe three to five days at best. We're gonna give you some tips that are gonna give you hopefully the longer end of that vase life today. The other thing you should bear in mind is that different lilacs will have different vase life expectancies. We've just found that some lilacs last longer than others, so don't be disappointed if they don't last as long. It's not your fault. So we're gonna need a vase. Now, I like to use something that is low and wide and shallow like this one, especially for things like Mother's Day brunch because you can still see someone across. If you're sitting at a table, a tall like this one, you're not gonna be able to see mom. I like to keep my centerpieces a little bit lower, which is why I like these lower, wider vases. So when we're working with lilacs, mechanics are important. And mechanics are what we're talking about that's in the vase to help keep the lilacs in place. If you don't have good mechanics, these lilacs are gonna tip over, especially when we're using a low and wide vase like this one. Because there's a short stem, there's a lot of opportunity for it to flip up. The downside of a short and wide vase is that you are gonna need to be mindful of refilling the water more frequently. There's more evaporation happening here. So I'm gonna start with, now you could use either of these things. This is actually an antique floral frog. I love collecting these. They're just really fun to have around. You can use all kinds of different ones and you'll just put it right into your vase. But for today, what I'm actually going to be using is chicken wire. And this is actually vinyl coated chicken wire so that it won't rust in my water and I can just reuse the same piece over and over again. So the key here when I'm working with lilacs is that I wanna have a big enough piece of this chicken wire so you can see that I've actually folded it in to fit inside this vase. So there's actually two layers of chicken wire inside. And this is the trick when I'm working with something heavy like lilacs. And you know what? I'm actually even gonna put another piece inside just to give the stem something else to grip to. Some people will just use one layer of chicken wire across the top of their vase like this. It just doesn't work very well for something that's top heavy like a lilac because it's just gonna flip up, the stem is gonna be out of water. So I'm gonna double it up. I'm gonna put this little piece that I've just made into a little kind of a sausage. I'm gonna put that into the bottom and then I'm gonna put my other piece of chicken wire on top. So there's actually a lot going on inside and I just kinda cram it in there. No one's gonna see it when we're done. So this is actually pretty secure. So you can see how much is going on in here. There's really a lot of layers here. And this is pretty secure. I really couldn't pull it out. But if you want extra safeguard, what you can do, and this is really good if you're going to be traveling somewhere and taking your vase with you, is to secure it. This is just Oasis tape, so it is waterproof tape. And we're just gonna go ahead and put a piece across the top of our vase, just like so. And I'll put another piece going the other way, just for a little extra security. Now we always want to be sure that we're starting with a clean container when we're arranging flowers. Dirt in the water can actually clog the stems, which can make it hard for them to uptake water, so their vase life will be shorter. Now that I have my mechanics firmly in place, I'm going to start arranging. Now, part of making lilacs last a little bit longer is cutting them at the right point. So what we wanna do is cut them when they're not fully open. And I prefer to cut them when they're a little less than half open. And I'll show you what I mean by that. You can see here that only some of these lilacs are open. You can see these ones that are fully open and then there's more that are closed. So by cutting them at this stage, you're going to get a little bit longer vase life. If you wait until they're fully open, you're not going to get as long a life out of them. The other thing that I've done is as I've been cutting these, I'm cutting them early in the morning. So when they're the most hydrated, because overnight they absorb water, they're the most hydrated in the morning. So that's going to give them the longest vase life. After I've cut them, I removed most of the foliage. So you can see there's really not much foliage left on these. I leave a little bit, but not a lot. 
That's because the foliage needs water also to stay fresh. So we want all of the hydration in these stems going to the flowers and not to the foliage. That's going to help them last longer. That being said, I still like to leave some of the leaves on there just because it makes it more interesting. So I've stripped the lower bit of the bark. That's also just to help this lilac hydrate. So what I do is I just take my clippers, I actually use my heavy duty Felcos for this. So I open up my clippers and I just strip off the lower bark. So then once you have that kind of exposed stem, they're gonna be able to uptake water. And the other thing that I do is I give one little clip right straight up the middle of the stem to hydrate. Now I'm doing all of these hydrating steps before I'm even arranging. So I cut them in the morning, I let them sit during the day and absorb some nice water with all of this processing happening. So the cut up the middle, the stripped bark, removal of foliage, and I also put it into hot water. Not boiling, but hot water. Put the lilacs in a cool place in a tall vase just like this for the daytime, ideally in a dark spot that's nice and cool. Then you can arrange with them after they've sat and absorbed some water for about eight hours is what I like to do. All right, so let's get to arranging. This is a pretty simple arrangement. I'm just gonna go ahead and put some water in my vase. You can use floral food if you want. It's basically just citric acid, bleach, and a little sugar. I usually just do a splash of vinegar in the water, but whatever works best for you. And remember, we get a lot of evaporation off of this, so I'm gonna fill up this vase pretty high. We're gonna go ahead and start cutting. Now, what I like to do is I like to look at my vase and determine based on the depth of the vase how much to cut my lilac. So I know that I want it to sit about here, so I'm gonna cut about this much off the bottom. And then I'm gonna do another diagonal cut right up that stem. I'm not gonna strip the bark again. You could if you wanted to, if you really wanna safeguard and make sure that they are the most hydrated they possibly can be. You can cut some of these short. They don't all have to be long and I actually really prefer a slightly shorter arrangement, especially with these lilac. I usually like to have a couple pieces that sit up a little bit higher, just for a little bit of asymmetry. So I like a couple pieces to be up here. The pieces are a little long, so we'll recut it. I really feel like floral arranging is kind of a lost art. Like we all just throw things into vases anymore and it's not quite the same. I'm gonna have another piece that's gonna go over here and I think a little bit low. The shape I think I'm going for here, I don't always plan for a shape ahead of time. Sometimes I just let it do what it's going to do. But I think I want to have kind of a diagonal shape happening here. So one side up and then one side going a little bit more downward. This is where the chicken wire comes in really handy because we are able to stick a stem into a certain specific place and it really stays quite well. If we didn't have these multiple layers of chicken wire, that would not happen, trust me. <laughs> it would be, they would be flip-flopping all over the place. And it is okay, by the way, I'm probably not going to have enough lilac. I didn't want to over harvest from this bush. I do like to cut my lilacs by about a third every year, just because it, I find it helps keep the air circulation going inside the lilac and it helps give the lilac more sun on the inside of the bush, which keeps it producing longer. But if you don't have enough, we're gonna use a little bit of moss to fill in and cover up these mechanics. So don't worry, you're not gonna see the chicken wire. I wish you guys could smell this. And it's okay, by the way, if you put something in and then feel like you need to take it back out again, it's totally fine. Sometimes you can step back and look at your arrangement and see where it feels like there's some empty spots. Sometimes just that step back just to look at it can be helpful. I know that lilacs aren't the fanciest flower, but I really love them. I think, sometimes I think if I had to pick a favorite flower, it would be between lilacs and peonies. This is why I leave some pieces of foliage because you can see that it really does add a little bit of bulk to the arrangement. This is so lilac heavy. I'm gonna come around to the front and take a look. I think I'm gonna put this guy right down at the bottom. You can also use just lilac foliage. Um, lilac foliage 
can be a really nice little way to fill in kind of around the fronts there. If you cut it and remove it, you can still use it. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, I think we are nearing completion. I'm gonna use up the rest of this. I don't wanna lose my shape, so I don't wanna make it too heavy. Sometimes if you over add, I have this problem where I just keep adding and adding and adding because I have it. <laughs> and then it looks, it loses its pizzazz sometimes if you do that. So we're going to know when to say enough. I kind of want one that's really draping. So I'm going to just gently bend the stem here. All right, and our last one needs to go right in the front. Okay, now I'm going to grab some of my moss and I'm going to use the moss to fill in these mechanics so that you can't see the chicken wire. And this is just moss, I just reuse it. It's not green anymore, but that's okay. All right, and we're done. I think this is beautiful. My mom would love this. I would love this. I hope that you're inspired to go out and make something of your beautiful garden flowers. And maybe, hopefully, your lilacs will last a little bit longer with these tricks. Thanks, guys. See you next time at the farm.